appreciate the support you have come to make too. Yeah. So. <laughs> they were all there too. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that we'll move on to the uh, public comment period. Those wishing to speak must state their name and address for the record. After they have acknowledged by the board chair, each person will be limited to two minutes to make his or her remarks. Speakers will address all comments to the board as a whole and not one individual commissioner. The board may not take action on an item presented during the public comment period unless the item is already on the agenda for action. When appropriate, the board may refer inquiries and items brought up during the public comment period to the county administrator for follow-up. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to make public comment? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, commissioners, for having me uh, this afternoon. My name is Matt Sennett. I'm at 2519 Stone Creek Drive here in Owatonna. Um, I'm here this evening in regards to the East Side Corridor Project and to represent not only myself, but many residents within the county and city and neighborhood at Rose Street and Country View Avenue. Many residents and citizens of Boatana and Steele County have voiced their concerns over the proposed location of this new corridor, placing the high-speed road and truck route along 20 backyards in this neighborhood and in close proximity to 130 other homes, and several more lots yet to be built on is unfathomable. unfathomable. These backyards have many children at play at any given time, many with special needs. There's also vulnerable adults uh, living in some of these homes as well. We're talking about 45 to 55 mile an hour zones on this roadway that's projected to be just as busy as Rose Street. That's what's being built for large trucks projected to pass upwards of 17 every 17 seconds, according to the studies that were previously done. Aside from the danger posed to children, and others from the roadway itself, this will no doubt cause property values for those along this road to decline, um, but also most homes in the neighborhood due to a, a point I'm going to make here in a minute. No amount of mitigation is going to remove the concern with the noise, especially that's going to rock every house in this neighborhood and trucks kick on their engine brakes as they slow down to the intersection of the right there at Road Street. It makes sense that they have to stop. Um, or those coming from Rose Street stopping this way, big trucks. Every resident living in one of these 150 homes in this neighborhood is going to hear this. And I brought um, a speaker with me so you can understand what a jake brake is. I don't know if many of you know what that is, but large trucks, to save the brakes, use the engine brake to kind of slow their trucks down. Very common practice and um, can't always be enforced. You know, and that's the problem here. to this corridor on 29th, which uh, we just can't understand why it's going to be there, but there were many alternatives prepared uh, ahead of time that were all eliminated without um, seemingly any really details of explanation other than they wanted to focus the study on one road. However, this was the road they picked. Um, commissioners, I'm urging you to please consider 34th Avenue as the best route. I've been to many meetings with county, city, even a few of these meetings here now, and all the residents I've heard, far, heard from so far support this. Um, I've not heard a single one support 29th Street, if, uh, that being the road. Um, in fact, I even have an article here that was shared, and then I'll wrap up here. Um, but this article was shared in the Steele County Times. This is the assistant county engineer saying that 34th Avenue is um, just too far away for the current needs, but that it already exists and it runs north and south. Um, goes on to say that, but it's about a half or a mile and a half east of Oatana. And I'm not exactly sure, I think maybe this is a misunderstanding. So I think that this really would be a good thing to look into uh, because it's not a mile and a half east of Oatana, it's actually 0.6 miles from the proposed 29th. So 34th Avenue would take just over 30 seconds to get to. Also allows for uh, future development along 34th, if that's where it was put, 
Obviously, we can't stick any convenience stores or things like that close to these na this neighborhood. Uh, 29th was to be built, but 34th allows for some expansion uh, for residents as well as some commercial. And I know that all of us out there on that side of town would love a convenience store, a gas station, maybe also a grocery store at some point. Uh, it was brought up last time at a, at a previous meeting. This is kind of like Circle Drive in Rochester. You know, it might seem a little further out to some. Uh, but everybody I've heard from so far says 30 seconds is not a big deal. And that was so, um, from some residents who weren't even impacted um, by this proposal. So it seems to be a viable alternative. Um, so I, maybe it's a miscommunication. Uh, maybe, you know, if you all could consider 34th in this study that's getting ready to kick up, I think it'd be in the best interest of residents. I know I speak for many when I say that. Um, so I appreciate the time to be able to come and speak with you this evening. Thanks for your consideration. Thanks, man. Thank you. Is there anyone, anyone else wishing to speak? Yes. I'm uh, Mike Bateman. I live at 2426 Tin Road Lane, North Division. Um, I've had a 20 year, 20 plus year career in product development at IBM Sage Glass. Uh, when we were designing and developing product, safety was always a key priority. Number one. Much research and testing was done before a product was finally released. There was close collaboration with the customer during the design and development phase as to what worked best for them. So, considering the residents of this development as customer, addressing the east side corridor, how much study has been given to this project? I've not personally seen any county workers in our neighborhood. Is this the best route being considered because the assistant county engineer wants it and he wants it now, the safety being maybe not so far, a, pri a high priority. Um, has a traffic study been done? Um, in closing, uh, lots of people disobey traffic laws that are speed, noise, traffic, control signs, etc. Um, really on what he just said. A few days ago, I was filling up with gas on 26th Street, and a semi slowed down through the traffic circle and applied his Jake brake. The noise was so deafening. If you were having a conversation, you had to stop. If you lived in a house within 100 or maybe even further from that, I'm sure things would have shaken off the wall. It was that loud. Um, and then one other observation I made is last night I was out and I probably counted at least a dozen kids, you know, little kids like this. Um, up and down the street on their scooters, <coughs> bikes, no regard to traffic. And our neighborhood is aware of this, and we're, everybody's pretty careful and accepting, accepting of it because this is where they play. So if we open this up to this corridor, it's a setup for disaster. And uh, that's all I have to say, but thanks for hearing me out. Thank you very much for your comment. Anyone else wishing to speak? Melissa Zimmerman and I am at 2525 Stony Creek Drive. I'm um, again to the East Side Corridor. I typed it up here, hopes to fit in two minutes. As I've listened over the last several months to those affected by the East Side Corridor, the resounding response is that it is most beneficial to the community and Otana as a whole, as well as the existing neighborhoods and farmers to put the corridor at 34th Avenue. The number one reason being safety of the community that already exists there and has existed there for nearly two decades. As I've listened, I've heard a lot of mitigation necessities that residents need to lower the safety concerns as we cannot eliminate the, eliminate the concerns with the road on 29th Avenue. As the only safe option is space. Some of these mitigations include reduced, reduced speeds, curb and gutter, sewer system, irrigation and drainage mitigation to not dump water on our properties, 15 plus foot berms with mature tree lines, power lines buried to prevent power outages from that mature tree line, sidewalks throughout the uh, developments, parking for the trail for trail access, additional cul-de-sacs, traffic controls such as roundabouts north and south of the neighborhood to encourage people to slow down, adherence to eminent domain laws rather than straight up telling us you're going to use our property, 
because just as you are not purchasing land from a farmer, you're purchasing their livelihood, you would be purchasing our safety, security, equity, investment, properties, and retirement, things we cannot get back. Flood prevention and changing and changing the floodplains will cause, as changing the floodplains will cause flooding into existing neighborhoods per existing environmental <clears throat> impact reports. Noise reduction mitigation, mitigations to ensure quick access to hospitals when those roads are flooded. Financial securities ensuring property values don't decrease because of this road. Legal financial medical agreements should someone be hurt or property be damaged as a result of this road. Proof that the northern part of the road will be completed rather than destroying neighborhoods for short-sighted and underfunded plans. We know money quickly disappears when pr provided from the state. But the one thing none of these mitigation factors do is create space. It is the only thing we are asking for. Purchasing land from farmers absolutely is expensive, but so is the cost of these mitigation factors, all over the cost of a few extra seconds of travel. In the financial plans for and development plans for 2005 to 2025, the time frame we are currently in and looking to complete this road in, the plan was outlined for this corridor to be at 34th Avenue. The city outlined plans to grow east and predicted by 2025, the town would have expanded to 34th Avenue already with just 1.5% growth. But we all know just a few short years after 2005, in 2008, the economy tanked and the housing market crashed and Owatonna placed a housing freeze. Houses fell into foreclosure and sat empty so the city could no longer allow new ones to be built. The population didn't grow, it dropped. The plan outlined the growth north and east of town and noted that the town could not grow residentially to the south and west as they are uh, landlocked by 14 and 35 and industry. So the plan was to grow east and 34th was to be the east side corridor. The document is just shy of 20 years old, but in that time period we are in, and it is a significantly more accurate representation of the plans for growth and development of Oatana. It accounted for the neighborhoods that exist today unlike the plans from 1999 that are currently being cited as placing this road at 29th Avenue. The city plan for growth, and if, we, and if we want to plan for growth today, 34th Avenue still makes the most sense, allowing us to do it right. 34th Avenue is an existing minimum maintenance road and goes north past Medford and south past 14. There is one small section missing because a farmer decided to till it under. As a minimum maintenance road, it's obviously not wide enough to do what the east side corridor needs and land for farmers would still need to be purchased. However, we're talking a minimum impact compared to bisecting multiple farmers' prime farming fields. I would love to tell you exactly how many farm fields are currently being bisected in this plan, but the county assistant engineer is not being forthcoming with this information. It is public information, but, publicly, but not publicly made available. And when I inquired about uh, this information, he blame shifted rather than providing the information. So I still don't have access to this information. But I can tell you, following 34th Avenue doesn't bisect a single parcel of land. There is one farmer that owns multiple parcels that would need mitigation. But no other farmers had land bisected by following 34th Avenue. Versus, I think it was at least four farmers' prime land being bisected, their livelihoods and income and so many more safety. Planning for growth by building this road at 34th Avenue allows Owatonna to plan for the future, to become that enticing community again. It allows for planning of things like gas stations and grocery stores. Today, none of those exist on the east side, and we're forced to go downtown simply to get gas to travel on this road. Not planning for that means even with a road, people are still going to have to go downtown to be able to drive. We have to go farther yet for groceries and other everyday necessities. These are, these are necessities to allow for growth and development that would, be served, that would be best served on the main road, whereas that can't be done if you abut the road to existing developments and thus incredibly short-sighted and causing future harm, not just present harm. While the 2005 plan may not have panned out exactly as the city wanted, there is still time and room to make that happen, and this road is crucial to the success of making Owatonna and Steele County that inviting community that once was outpacing Rochester and Mankato for growth. We need growth and we need to plan for it. We don't want to lose the wonderful community that 
that's existing on the edge of Oatana and build a high-speed road abutting the existing residents. <coughs> excuse me. The existing residents will do exactly that, as many are already making plans to move <coughs> if this road goes through, because it takes away safety, security, investments, retirement, and so much more. Since the pandemic, many of us now work remotely and no longer have physical ties to Owatonna, the community, or Steel County, which means the only reason we are here is because we love the community. But in giving that up, there isn't a whole lot of reason to stay, which will negatively impact Owatonna and Steel <coughs> County as a whole. The exact opposite of the things we should be planning for, growth. Please don't destroy the wonderful community that exists and was already planned for 20 years ago by simply creating space for safety and growth. Building the road on 34th Avenue just makes sense. Limits mitigation costs is already an existing right of way and plans for growth and development and doesn't destroy the community and most importantly offers the safety every community wants and needs. There are so many benefits to adding just a few seconds to someone's commute. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, thank you all for your comments. Uh, correspondence, the only thing in your packet is from the uh, Oatana Partners for Economic Development, thanking the county's contribution to them. And uh, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Thanks for coming, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what are the board's wishes on the consent agenda? Motion to the consent agenda as permitted. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, under the general, we got July anniversaries report. And we got Gina tonight. You do. 